Okay, so hello everyone. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, can, can you confirm that you are hearing me? Maybe by, by writing on, on the chat or maybe just say something. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Jen. Good, good, good. So uh, welcome to 2SH4 and uh, welcome as well to computer engineering department in, in, uh, in general. Um, well, in this first lecture, uh, in fact, we are not, not so I, I see some of you are not muted. Uh, would you please all mute yourself and then uh, unless you want to say something when I'm asking a question, then we, we can use the mic. But other than this, to avoid any background noise, let's make sure we are all muted. Yeah, thank you. So um, so basically in this lecture, we are not the, the usual way I start the course with is, is really something that doesn't have to do much with the course content itself. But I just take this opportunity uh, to introduce you a little bit to the higher level or the big picture of uh, computer engineering uh, and where this course and other courses as well fall within the big picture. I usually find this very useful for for everyone to, to basically being able to spot why I'm taking this. Uh, why I'm taking this course, why this makes sense, how this fits within the big picture, how the puzzle pieces kind of arrange it together. Um, this kind of gives you more motivation to really study the topic uh, that that the course covers. And uh, so this is the first part of the of, of this lecture, uh, which is just high level view, right? Um, and then the second part is more about the logistics of the course, right? This is uh, a course that has many aspects, many contents, and and we also have uh, well considerably a large number of students, uh, 300 plus. So we have to be organized, and uh, I will walk you through what are the logistics of the course. Hopefully uh, this allow us throughout this semester to have, uh, I would say a more smooth experience together and uh, you guys get the best benefit out of the course. Good. So it's already 1031, so I guess I can start. So well. So as I was saying, the first part is mainly about what is what is the big picture, right? So uh, what are we trying to study? Like you are into computer engineering, or even if you are taking this course from a different field, uh, but you want to understand, uh, you interact with computers in one way or the, or, or the other, and you want to understand what is the big picture, right? Uh, so what I'm showing here is what people in, in computer engineering uh, domain usually call the full system stack. If you think of your laptop, for example, or, or a desktop machine, or even your, your mobile phone, uh, well, everything starting from any application you use, let's say WhatsApp, for example, or even Teams that we are using right now, going all the way down to really the, the circuit itself that is composing the, the system on a chip you have in your phone, this is the full system stack, right? And it, it has so many components as you can see right now. What, we, what you interact with is, is really the application itself, right? That's, that's the starting point. Uh, which again, like the applications that we are all aware of, whether the, these are mobile applications, whether they are like an application that you use in your desktop, again, the concept is the same, right? Uh, but this application, we deal with it as a consumer, right? Uh, someone that is running an executable and to get some job done. But in this course, you are going to take a different, um, you're going to wear a different hat, basically. You are going to be the programmer of this application, right? So you're going to write code that will end up being an application so you don't use the application as an executable, but rather you write a code that later on we should compile, then assemble, and then a link those uh, those things that you see here. Let me use a, a pointer. Uh, then this one, then laser pointer. Yeah. So here, compiler, assembler, linker, and in fact, Lab Zero will help you set up these things, right? And then you write the source code, you get the executable out of this. But then afterwards, if you go back to the consumer hat, you are running your application in an operating system, right? For example, right now I'm using Windows. Uh, maybe in my laptop I'm using uh, Ubuntu, like a Linux uh, version. Maybe you have a Mac OS, right? So this is the operating system. An operating system is a course in its own, right? Uh, uh, that covers why we need operating systems, how they work, how they schedule different running applications, 
on processors. So that's another course in computer engineering. And then compiler is another course, right? 2SH4 basically is about this, writing applications, as we will see in a later slide, right? Then afterwards, once you run your application, well, what really executes this application, it runs on a hardware, right? But the hardware need to understand the application instructions you wrote. We write things, for example, into SH in C or C++, or even like previously in Java, or in your first year, you wrote applications in Python, no matter what is the programming language, doesn't really matter. Uh, at the end, you, um, you basically, let me see the chat, it might seem that there is an issue. Uh, is there a way to increase the slide size? It's think of only 50% my area view. Uh, I see this may be mainly because I'm using a wide screen. Uh, that's something that I should take into consideration afterwards. OK, so let me do something different. I will share from the tablet instead. OK, thanks for letting me know. So what I would do is I will stop sharing from here. And then I will share from here. Um, yes, I'll just transfer the slides on the other window. Okay, so let me just share that. Share from here. Then I hope if I go here full screen, should be better. Let me know if this works better for you. OK, good, 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 good. Yeah, the good thing is also well right now I'm on the tablet, so maybe if I want to scratch something on the slides, I can do that. Good. Um, yeah, thank you. So let's continue on. And, and then uh, basically what I was saying is. Um, so you write your program so so far Let's see i can use the pen here pen so far in this oh come on oh i don't see the pen but you guys do see it that's quite interesting maybe i should just share Okay, what about now? Okay, so I can't use the pen. Fine. So I guess I guess let's. Uh, well, as you will see, well, these things kind of uh, each year, we we'll kind of learn a few new things. Good. So so basically, in this layer, first layer, you have the application, and then the operating system, then the compiler. You got some sort of application that you want to run in a hardware. Good. But then. The hardware need to understand this, right? The contract between the software, which is 2SH4 is one of example of a course of software, you write programs, and another course that might be related to computer organization, for example, uh, 
which understands instructions, the contract between B these two walls, so these two courses, what we call ISA, right? Or in instruction set architecture. So you write in high level languages because they are more understandable to humans. We write C, we write Python, we write Java, but then at the end, the hardware does not understand this, right? The hardware only understands zeros and ones, right? So you need to translate this into what we call assembly. And in, during this semester, if you are in Combi and you will take another course, which is digital design, that will cover a little bit some of the assembly. Uh, and this assembly is later translated by the assembler into machine code, zeros and ones, right? This machine code later on is being transferred into the memory, stored there as a set of instructions, one by one. And then the hardware itself, what we call here data path control path, digital logic design, circuit design, will take these instructions one by one and try to execute them. ISA is standing for instruction set architecture, which is basically the definition of the assembly of the, that the language understand. And each architecture, each processor understands maybe a different ISA. For example, if you have an Intel machine, then the ISA, does anyone know what is the ISA of the Intel machines? If you have an Intel one. Well, it's called x86, right? That's the ISA of Intel machine. But for example, if you are using something from ARM, well, ARM has a different ISA, right? If you use something like there is a Spark ISA, there are multiple. Well, right now there are very few uh, standard ISAs. Previously, maybe 15 years ago, there were like around 100. They get reduced, reduced, and then there was a market dominance as usual in the technology industry. And then right now we have like um, appearance, maybe three or four that are the most commonly used ones. Good. Well, good. So more visualization into this, what I call program journey. Uh, well, you write something in C++, for example, or any other language, Python, Visual Basic, C, whatever, you take it into a compiler, this is like a, a common example of a compiler that's called GCC tool chain. Uh, well, if you are using Mac OS, there is a different one, Xcode, but at the end, it's it's something that takes a program in high level language and translates it into an executable towards the end, right? You have an executable. This executable runs on top of an operating system. Uh, and here's some examples of operating systems. You have Android, you have Linux, you have iOS, you have Windows. And then this operating system by running this application on top of an ASA, the contract between the software and the hardware wallets, x86, Spark, ARM is some examples. And here, all like at the end, all of this like runs in, in the hardware itself. Here I, I show one example for floor plan of an Intel uh, uh, i7 processor, for example, right? So every aspect of this journey is really a course on its own in, uh, in Combench, okay? So for example, well, we said 2SH is here because you write programs. Uh, and then we said there is another compilers course, and then there is an operating system course, and then there is a digital design and computer organization, computer architecture course, right? Uh, but then also, there is something like machine learning or AI, right? Where I'm not writing, well, at the end, you really write programs as well, you write code, but the main topic of such course is not about how to write the code. It's more about developing new algorithms, right? Trying to write an algorithm uh, that solves a certain problem. So you start at the very high level from, um, I would say, like an English defined problem. Like you, you write it in, 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 in bare language. You try to well, say, I'm a customer that I want, for example, write an application to handle transactions in my, I don't know, like supermarket place, right? Or a hospital place, right? Uh, some 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 very high level problem that you want to solve something in real life, and then, as an engineer, you would drive an algorithm for this. You write an efficient algorithm, and then this algorithm will be coded into some high level language, and then, well, the journey that we just explained go through, right? Is there any question here? Is 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 this like kind of showing you the big big like like? Is this something new for some of you, like, or, or you, you had this information before, or does it put it in perspective for you? Okay, good. Is there any question? Okay, good. So as I was saying, like each one of this, there are certain courses here. Like if, if you're talking about algorithms, and this is one big difference between, for example, computer engineering and uh, maybe software engineering or 
computer science is that most of the focus of computer science is really on this. Uh, I would say theoretical or uh, software side of the things so like AI, machine learning, algorithmic software engineering. And then here there are like programming to SH is one example of these. Here that's the compiler construction or compiler optimization. Here this operating systems, as we said, and here is that's computer architecture. That's a fourth year computer engineering course and computer organization, which is uh, right now is a project in the second year. Good. And then at the end, if you go lower in 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 the in 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 the hardware side, there is the digital design or computer organization course that covers like how a computer works. There is a data bath, and there is a control bath. I know all of this kind of new for you, but when you take this course, you can really put it in 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 this big uh, picture. And then even beneath the computer organization, which is an abstraction, there is the actual circuit design, right? So it's digital logic, logic design, which is a course I believe is, is taught also this semester by Dr. Jennifer. Uh, if, if you're taking this course, this basically well is, is more about how you design the circuits that at the end you can put some of them together to uh, uh, design a, an arithmetic unit that the end can constitute, multiple of them can constitute a processor, right? And then even lower than this, you focus more in electronics side, like how each gate, for example, and gate or OR gate, these things that you cover in digital design, how they are consisting of different transistors, right? Like uh, and, and transistor is the lower level right, right now we have in, in the circuit design. Uh, well, this is usually covered in electronic uh, courses. Um, then the other thing you, you really, if you understand, you, you would be fascinated by this fact is by, by focusing on the concepts, things that look very different in reality, at the end, they are really the same thing. They are following exactly the same process, the same procedure. Uh, I would say the same design flow uh, in industry, right? For example, if I'm taking a laptop or a desktop and then I'm taking a, a mobile phone, well, they look very different, right? But at the end, if, if you look into them from computer engineering perspective, they are almost exactly the same thing, right? Uh, so here, if if you just take your phone and then you uh, distill it down into the components, you find that, well, I have a screen, which is nothing other than, well, an input, because it's, if it's touch a screen, it's, a, it's an input I.O. device, and then also it's an output because it's a screen, right? Which is exactly the same for your um, laptop. You also have a screen, well, it's, if it's not touch a screen, it's only an, an output dev uh, like output device, but it can also be input if you'd like, or it, the keyboard itself can be the input. And then, well, below this, you have what we call the SOC uh, system on a chip. Right, uh, and this system on a chip is, well, it's like if you look into the computer organization, computer architecture, the circuit that we have looked at, that's really what constitutes your, your actual hardware. Uh, it, it has a CPU, it has a GPU, it has memory, it has uh, well processors of connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. Uh, well, in laptop, there is exactly the same thing. You have a motherboard that connects the processor, which might be an Intel processor, uh, with your memory and your graphic chip, etc. Right? Um, and even going lower, lower level, you'll if you look into the circuits, you'll find well that's the SOC in your mobile phone. Uh, this is the Apple A6 uh, chip. This is one of the very old ones, right? And this is the Core i7. Uh, from Intel, right? Both of them, like they have, well, that's the floor plan of processors. They have memories, onboard memories, like or on a chip memories, like caches. They have off a chip memories, like DRAMs. So at the end, well, they look very similar from from the computer engineering perspective. Okay. Is there any question? Well, I see. So, well, um, well, I, I I prefer to 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 postpone all the logistic or organization stuff towards the end, but maybe. Something uh, that I should say right now, usually what, what we tried last year well, during this COVID thing, and it worked pretty well, is the chat, you guys can talk to each other, ask questions, it's completely up to you. Like it's, it's a good thing to, to, uh, to kind of have a, this collaborative uh, medium that wasn't there before, right? Because in, in physical presence, if you talk to each other, this causes kind of a noise, but well, chatting is fine. But then, because I want to be able also to use the chat, as a medium to ask me questions, what you should do if you have a question to me, just use two brackets and then write question, right? And then every 10 minutes or 15 minutes, when I stop like at certain points uh, in, in the lecture, I will scan the chat, look into the question mark, and then just answer this one. Anything else, 
I would um, visually ignore, right? Um, for example, here I see a, a question from Arjun, what is the Apple ISA? Well, there is nothing called Apple ISA because so far, at least until a few months ago, Apple didn't design and uh, manufacture their own chips. Right now, they intend to do so. Google also is in, like they intend to do so, but the, uh, it depends on what I would say license the, the use, what processor they use. Um, if they are using Intel, which is like, for example, in, in your Mac OS, this, this is what they usually use, then it's the x86, right? Uh, if uh, you use um, like a, a phone that they get, most of, of the phone they read really have an ARM license with an ARM processor, so it's ARM V9 uh, processor, right? So this A series stuff from Apple, it's, it's really, well, it's either that or that, right? Uh, well, uh, maybe in, in, in a couple of years, Google, for example, announced it in 2023, they will have their own chip in, in, in their own Pixel phones, right? Apple, uh, they are intending to do the same thing. So let's see, I guess we are in, in interesting times. Okay, so, well, all the motivation, all the big picture, I hope this kind of motivates you a little bit to study more about computer engineering and especially understand where to SH uh, as a programming course uh, lies within this big picture. Um, I'll stop here for any question and then we go to the logistics side. Okay, good. Maybe a good exercise is when you take any new course from, from now until you graduate, well, think of how you would put it in this big picture, right? What level it lies in, how it interfaces with the upper level and the lower level. This gives you a very good understanding of how things really work uh, when you put them together. Good. OK, so for logistics. A little bit about me, like um, usually, um, well, I'm, I'm an assistant professor at McMaster University here. Uh, well, I'm considerably like a, a new faculty member because I started in 2019. Uh, what I usually work on is, is more really related to the system level uh, research. So I do computer architecture, embedded systems, cyber physical systems. Uh, I do also teach the embedded systems course in fourth year. Um, but based on the type of the research we do, we really do heavy programming. That's another, another reason why I'm also interested in this course uh, as well. And that's that's uh, my email address uh, and to communicate with me, I, I have a separate slide for for communication. So this course, given that it's a considerably uh, large, um, large course, uh, as I said, like 300 plus students this year, we have uh, maybe this is the course that has the, the uh, largest number of TAs. We have 12 TAs uh, and those are the email addresses of, 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 of every TA. It's very important to go back to this lecture slide especially uh, because, well, you need to contact one of the TAs. Here is the reference for their email addresses. Later on, I'll give you the table for office hours and then table for lab, who, uh, who is the TA for each lab, so you know exactly how to reach to the right person, right? And I would really prefer you always go back to, to this lecture, lecture zero, uh, if you got any question about logistics, right? Uh, what I usually do is before the lecture starts, maybe a day before or in worst case, one hour before I upload the slide PDF on Avenue. Uh, lecture zero is already uploaded, so you should have access to these slides. Um, good. For the course schedule, so we have the lectures Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 1030 to, to 1120, and then we have the tutorial on Fridays, uh, 1130 to uh, 1220. So that the tutorial, as you will see, this this course I like to transfer to be more like hands on. So I try to make everything kind of services the lab itself, right? Uh, if you talk to previous students or maybe something like the reputation of the course, it's a little bit hard course. If you compare it to Python, for example, in the first year, the reason for this is that the labs are not trivial. You need considerable time and thinking and efforts to, uh, to really be able to do the labs. But if you do what I kind of advise you to do, or if you take my advice on how to really progress in this course, you will not find any problem really finishing the labs because there is nothing impossible about them. They, they are not supposed to take too much time. If you follow in the lectures, because you will see that when I'm explaining something in the lecture, I will connect it with the lab. I would say, well, 
this is the concept and in the lab we do so and so and the tutorial as well uh, you will find that the ta is really well we have a lab every other week as we'll see right now the tutorial directly before the lab will be only about the lab so it will walk you through all the lab questions try to provide some hints uh, try to give the big picture of why what we why we do what we do in this lab so it also gives you some kind of uh, i would say a, a starting point to, uh, to start from right um, and then well office hours all about the lab and the lab is all about the lab so if, if you really focus on understanding the lectures and tutorials and then apply the lab, you will have no problem at all with the midterm or, or the final. Good. Uh, this year, everything is, is run on Microsoft Teams as, as we do this lecture. Uh, I have already scheduled all the, the slots, so you should have received in your calendar, uh, in your Outlook calendar, all the invitations and in, in, for, for basically your, the lab section you, you register for, for the office hours and uh, as well as the lectures and tutorial. I guess someone is is unmuted. If there's a question, please go ahead. If there is no question, please mute yourself. Thank you. So for labs, again, as I was saying, this is a hands-on course, right? Previously, uh, one of the changes I, I, I the students asked for in the in the past couple of years, and then I tried to push to 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 to, to get them implemented, is to move from C and Java to C and C plus plus, right? And I believe this is really a very good thing for you, and and also it, it will make the the course a little bit easier because the transition from C to C plus plus is way way uh, easier than transitioning from C to Java, right? Uh, to me, as you will see when I I I, I, I explain the lectures, I, I focus more on the concepts because as a computer engineer, you shouldn't really worry too much about the syntax, right? Once you learn a concept. And you learn a programming language, you'll see later on is that well, you want to do this in this programming language, even if you didn't program in this before, it's much easier for you to, to, to start, right? So the syntax itself is not the big deal. Uh, it's rather the concepts, the way of thinking, right? Uh, but anyway, we moved from Java to C++ because I believe that's the logical thing to do uh, based on the feedback we got. Good. So we have a total of five labs, three in C and two in C++. In addition to Lab Zero, Lab Zero is nothing other than an, uh, an an environment setup, right? So it's it's all to get you ready for starting the labs, right? Um, the other thing that is very important about the lab, similar to past year, we're going to use GitHub Classroom for that, right? And Lab Zero again has all the details of what you need to do for GitHub Classroom. By the way, Lab Zero document is already on Avenue as well. Um, uh, so this year we have a total of five lab sections. Uh, so we we every every lab basically takes two weeks. So for example, lab one, well, lab zero is a special case. I will talk about this right now. But lab one takes two weeks, and then in, in, we have the lab session itself in the second week of these two weeks, right? So we only so the lab sessions run every other week. So we have a, a week where we don't have any lab session, and then a week we have all the lab sessions Monday to Friday, two thirty to five thirty five sections and you you should know your section and, and the schedule uh, accordingly based on what you registered for um, but the point is that you should never never wait until your lab session to do the lab well first of all the lab will not especially advanced labs later on will never finish in a couple of hours or three hours it require more time but also we did the lab session such that you ask questions you 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 try it on your own you found problems and you come and, and ask questions, try to get help to finish the lab, right? Uh, this year, similar to past year, uh, we don't do demo in the lab session. So you are not really required to come to the lab session if you don't have any question, right? They are only to offer help. Uh, so they are more like office hours in that sense, right? Uh, and for the lab deadlines, all the labs, like all sections would have to submit uh, the lab as Lab Zero explains, to GitHub exactly on the same time, right? So, so the lab session is not really related. Your lab section is not related to the lab deadline at all, right? Uh, so these are the deadlines for for every lab. Lab Zero, for example, deadline is on. All, you'll find this like all in Fridays, uh, end of the day. Uh, lab Zero, for example, is September seventeenth, which is uh, the next Friday. Good. Uh, is there any question so far? A lot of information, I would say. OK. 
So because we only have uh, five lab sections and lab sections are only for help, uh, to also give you more hands on. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, Dr. Hello, Dr. Yep. Hassan. This is Mohammed. Uh, so we have a bunch of questions in the chat, like if you would like to check them and answer them. Okay, thanks, Aladdin. Yeah. Let me see. That's the arm thing. So we have we start from there. Question, are you? Okay. Question, why is the legislation around modding and loading your phone so tight that the act is heavily discouraged by manufacturers despite the hardware being similar enough to PC hardware? Modding and rooting your phone. Ah, yeah, you are talking about more like Apple uh, industry. This is a general question, but well, I, I also like these kind of questions, right? Trying to understand what's going on in real life. So basically, Apple uh, has a different, um, I would say, business model. The business model of Apple is completely different than Google, which is I offer you the full system, right? It's not just the hardware, it's not just the software, but you get everything as a package, right? And this is why they are against routing, for example, right? Because in fact, if you read the detail, and this is something funny, I don't know if all of you already know or not, but if you read the detailed uh, agreement when you buy an iPhone, for example, you are really a licensee of the phone. You don't own the phone, right? And that's something that is very critical, right? The same thing for Tesla cars, by the way, right? So you are you kind of well buy the car to use it. You are not a fully owner from the legal point of view. This is why you are not allowed to do few things. One of them is routing, for example, right? Uh, well, Apple is kind of saying, well, this is uh, the ad advertising. This is because of security reasons, and then this is a closed source system, so it's more secure. But in fact, they do it because they offer an end-to-end -end solution. Not many companies offer end-to-end -end solutions in technology right now. IBM was one one of the, I would say, leading in that. They used to have the full system, starting from operating system, even software, languages, etc., up to the hardware. But they failed to do so because they tried to do this in the desktop domain. But Apple is successful because they do it in the phone domain, and they also play the game of branding, like loyalty game, right? Uh, this is why, again, they are against this routing stuff. They don't want to have it open for everyone to modify the hardware or the software or play around with it, right? Because this breaks the whole story of you get the thing as a closed source, you just use it, and we take care of everything else, right? Google is following a different approach, which is, well, the software is completely open source. Any company can use it. Because that means I get more um, users to it, like the, the, the Android operating system. At the same time, well, they used to ask other companies to manufacture the hardware for them, right? Uh, that's the uh, Nexus series of Google phones, right? But right now they are more towards, well, we're going to manufacture our own SOC uh, for, well, phones and cars as well, right? So right now, I, I, what I would say is that they are, they are merging, like those kind of completely open um, uh, way of doing the business and the closed source of doing the business, they, they kind of, getting closer to each other, right? Google is going to manufacture the, the hardware, which means, well, it's more closed source. Apple also, I don't know, they still, this is their business model, so I don't think this is going to change soon, right? Does the exam have lab-based content? Going back to the course question. So, uh, yeah, well, the lab content is not a new content. It's, it's really an application of what we do in the lectures, right? So if, if you do the labs yourself, and, and and you know exactly what the lab is doing, you have no problem whatsoever with the midterm and the final, right? Uh, so yes, the lab will, well, the, the midterm and the final will heavily depend on you doing the labs, right? If this is the question, right? Uh, but lab content is not different from the lecture content. Everything is really the, it's just an application of it. Do we have pre-lectures to watch? Uh, well, yes and no, right? So they are not, uh, a prerequisite and not obligatory. You don't have to. Uh, but what I have done is on Avenue, I posted some kind of review material for Python. You can see this in some of the prerequisite tab on Avenue uh, to go through some of the concepts that I found in previous years uh, students might be struggling with. And also, I put a link for all the lectures from past year to SH, right? So you have access to this. Uh, including tutorials, uh, uh, including lectures, so everything. So if you want to watch this, uh, if, 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 you, if you think they are useful, that's, that, that's uh, well, you, you are more than welcome to do that. In fact, I encourage, right? But they are not mandatory. Um, 
Will we be joining? Will we be joining the tutorial this Friday? Yes, we do have a tutorial this Friday, because the lab deadline is next Friday, and uh, well, you have to come to the tutorial. And uh, in fact, next week we also have the lab sessions and the office hours, such that uh, to help you to finish the environment setup. Right? Uh, and I will talk more about Lab Zero now. Uh, as an exam question, are labs individual? Yes, labs are an individual basis. What time are the labs due on each Friday? Uh, so that's well, 11.59, so it's end of the day, and they are programmed on the GitHub classroom. And also this is written in the lab manual uh, of each lab. Um, so yeah, so all this information you will find in, in the lab doc. Um, yeah, good. What is the format of the midterm? Uh, I will talk about exams later, right? So it, let's talk about the midterm and the final. Uh, maybe, well, I, if I got time at the end of, of this. Uh, uh, um, okay, so if 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 I um, if I got more time to to, um, to to talk about the exams, I will do in this lecture. If not, then we still have some time until the midterm comes. Do you recommend taking physical notes for this course? Is it more application and could? Yeah, so that's something I, you will find in in this. Uh, uh, well, I tried to leverage, in fact, this virtual environment last year, and it worked pretty well. Is you will see me in in lectures, not this one, because we don't have technical content. But starting from next lecture, what we would do is I, I really have. This is the reason why I have this white screen is I have in one window the slide and another window I have uh, Eclipse compiler, for example, and then we will switch and we write code together. So what I would ask you to do is come to the lecture, open Eclipse in the background once you have it set up, and then we will start coding together, right? Uh, I will run things. I will show you, for example, well, I will write the program in uh, a wrong way. It doesn't work. It doesn't combine, and then we go through why it does not combine, right? So I will try to make it more hand hands on. Um, do you have to take physical notes? Well, it's completely up to you because the style differs from a student to another student. But usually what I will do if I need to write something on the screen or on the tablet, I will also post the notes that I wrote during the lecture to you. Uh, I usually use one note for that um, on, on Avenue. The other thing is all the recordings will be uh, also posted after the lecture to the playlist on YouTube for, for the course, right? So you will have access basic to everything we do during the lecture. If if you choose, I would say the best thing is to write the code while we talk, right? That's really the most important thing. Like if, if you start having your hands dirty on writing code, facing problems, asking questions, and then th that's really what you need to do. I, I want you to learn really how to kind of think about a problem on the fly and, and, and coding it and having problems and solving it. That's that's the important thing. Good. So going back to the logistics, uh, in addition to lab sessions, which are used for help, uh, with the lab every week. We said the lab sessions are every other week, right? So office hours run every week daily from 1030 to 230, right? So you have every day four hours to get access to one. Uh, well, this is going to be a TA myself or, or whoever. Uh, if you got any questions, just drop in in, in, in the team's channel and ask, right? Uh, we we constructed that way. Uh, such that, well, while you are working on the lab at any time, you have access to help if you need one, right? And I really encourage you to use that, right? One big problem I found in past year is that if you wait to develop the lab the day before the lab, you face problems. First of all, you might not get the help you would like, but also because many students might do this, the office hours end up being very crowded and you you waste your time. You wait in a long row and then you don't get the answer of the question. The TA is feels he is very stressed so he doesn't really help you the, the way he would have been able to help you if it was relaxed. So start in the lab as early as possible because right now you will have all the support you need, right? And again, the lab takes two weeks for a reason, right? If, if it finishes in a day, we would have just put a day as a deadline, but it does not finish in a day, right? Um, is there any question? Okay, so this is this is the office hour table. And again, all, all these things are already scheduled on Teams and you have you, ha you should have in your calendar. Uh, and that's the name of the TA that is running the office hour, the TA office hour session. Uh, and their email addresses are in a previous slide in case that you want to reach out to them. Good. 
So for for email communication, I uh, well, I will post by the way, I'll post my office hours as well uh, later on. But you will find me at at least during the first couple of weeks, I will drop in in lab sessions and and tea office hours as well uh, to help uh, the course starting uh, like uh, taking off. Um, for for email communication, to stay organized and given the large number of students, I would really advise you to follow the protocol that I'm saying right now, right? To, to be able, I can help every one of you that has a question. So we have the well, the the, the main TA of the course, uh, Muhammad Abu Layla, is already here in in uh, on on the lecture, and this is his email address. What you should write, like if assume you have a question, you write the email such that the title has something as combench to sh 4 right? Because well, we do it as a filtering, and if you don't follow this, well, it might be filtered out, so we don't see the email. And then our plan is to get back to you within a maximum of 48 hours, right? So if you didn't get a response from Aladdin within 48 hours, just forward your original email to me, right? Um, but hopefully this is our plan. If you don't follow this, well, it start getting disorganized and we might have a problem getting back to you. So I hope every one of us like follow the protocol such that you get the help that you would like, right? Are these lectures being recorded? Yes, all lectures are recorded. This one is being recorded and I will post them on the playlist on YouTube um, after the lecture finishes. Good. Any question? For evaluation, so we have the labs are 40%. As I said, like the labs are the main component really in this course. Uh, and you will see in the lab document at the very beginning of the lab, uh, what is the percentage of this lab as a total? I guess lab zero is 5% if I remember correctly. The midterm is 20% and final exam is 40%. We have a single midterm for this course. Uh, usually I do the midterm once we finish the C part or at least get very closer to finishing the C part. So the midterm will be mainly in C. Right, and the final exam, most likely the way I do it is two thirds of this here will be C plus plus, and one third will be C. Right? Yeah, there is only one midterm. Yeah. So uh, tentative outline. Again, all this information is also in the course outline on on Avenue, because I guess someone asked a question on the chat about that. Uh, so what we would do is the first half of the course is mainly C. Uh, well, we'll go through the basics, the syntax. Uh, well, if statements, for statements, repetitions, uh, how to write a program in general, how to structure it, uh, and then cover functions, arrays, strings, and then, well, the most advanced topic, pointers, arrays of pointers, double pointers, and then structures. Um, and then the second half of the course is C++, and it's mainly about object-oriented programming. C is very good in low-level programming because, well, C might be the lowest high level programming language. Python is very, very high level and it's very easy to learn. This is the reason why you took it in the first year. C is the complete opposite, right? So you have full control on the hardware. So as an engineer, you kind of understand better this interface I was talking about at the beginning of the lecture, like the interface between software and hardware, but also puts more responsibility on you because right now you have more control. So you might face more problems, uh, but C is very good. Like, and it's very widely used because it's very fast. Uh, well, it's widely used in embedded systems, automotive cars, and then even they are, uh, it's used to build uh, operating systems, something like Linux, for example. It's like C-based. And then C++ part of the course is to cover the object-oriented programming uh, paradigm. Right? Uh, again, what I would focus on is more the object-oriented itself with an application on C++. So you should really be able to do it using any other language, but this is what we're going to use. Classes, objects, then maybe lists, linked lists, inheritance, polymorphism, all these fancy words you hear about OOB, we will cover uh, during lectures and labs as well in the C++ part. Um, when is the midterm? I will post the exact date uh, on, on, on Avenue uh, before the next lecture, which is tomorrow. But if I remember the date correctly, it's November 8th. So it's, it's, it's the first week of November, but I will I will make sure I will post it as well. Good. Yeah, that's that's more like uh, academic misconduct. Uh, it's, it's more like uh, it's a template word, but but here I, I want to say something different than what is written, right? And well, I will be completely open and honest with you, right? One big problem of this course that I see students are facing is that if you don't do the lab on your own, you are going to struggle with the course. 
right? No matter what you try to do, right? And you might think, well, I'm going to do something different. And then, well, I, I have went through like maybe right now, thousand students taking this course before. And, and, I, and I have seen what they are doing, right? So if you don't do the lab, that's the easiest way to get maybe even A plus in this course with the minimal effort is to do the lab on your own. And you have all the support you need to ask questions, right? No matter what is your programming level right now, right? Put it as a target is by the end of this course, leverage it as an opportunity to learn programming in a more professional way, right? To my understanding, the first year Python course didn't take you up to that level yet, right? It was just an introduction. Uh, the way it run is not just for in like computer engineers and electrical engineers, it's like for, for chemistry and other. So they had to do it in a certain level, right? That's not the level that I guess all of you right now in front of me are wishing they should be in in programming, right? So what you should do is leverage this opportunity. You have the full support. You will never in your life, practical life, once you graduate, have 12 like graduate students and a professor trying to help you to learn programming, right? So that's really an opportunity in my point of view. Uh, and also it's the easiest way to get the mark. In addition to this, 2SH is really the basis of so many courses you take afterwards if you are in a comp eng field or elect eng, right? Uh, 2SI is based on that. Embedded systems is based on that, like uh, operating system courses based on that. So if uh, even computer organization, like the interface project course is really heavily based on C as well. So if you don't do good in this course, even if you get A, assume, but you don't do good in programming, you will face problems later on. And I, well, I had students in the past coming to me uh, after they took the course and they took other courses and they wish they would have done more effort in this course because it will save them later in other courses, right? So again, a sincere advice to you, regardless of the grades, I wouldn't worry at all about grades if you do what you should do, right? Which is doing the lab your own, ask questions if you need, like come to the lectures, or even watch them on YouTube. I, there is no obligatory reason you should come to the lecture if you feel you don't need this hands-on. I. Uh, like programming together and asking questions. But other than this, if you follow the course in a topic by topic basis, uh, you should do pretty well, right? The other thing is, because this is a programming course, concepts build on top of each other. For example, if the first lecture we focus on syntax, maybe later on if statements and for statements. In other courses, you just take a topic, you finish it, you move to another topic that is might not be related to the first topic. So even if you kind of drop the first topic, you don't get it, you are able to follow in the remaining parts of the course. Programming is not like that. If you don't get four loops, for example, in the lecture of the four loops, every other lecture afterwards, assume you know that, right? So you would better address the problem as early as possible to be able to follow in the remaining lectures, right? Um, that's really my very simple recipe for how to do good in this course with the minimal effort. Okay? Is there are five labs that term is each worth not not necessarily sana like it's like as i said each lab would worth different based on what i what is wrote, what what is being wrote in the in in the lab manual for example lab 0 because it's not an actual lab it's only getting you set up for the environment i guess it's only worth 5% what i remember is every other lab afterwards is 7% correct because we have five labs, seven, 35, and then 5%, that's 40, correct. So the first lab is 5%. Every other lab, if I remember correctly, is 7%. Uh, but again, like the exact answer you will find in every lab document, what type of data structure will be covering in this course? This course is mainly about, not about data structures. Data structures are covered in a different course that is 2SH is a prerequisite for, which is 2SI, right? You are taking next semester if you are taking this one. Uh, but, 2SH will prepare you a little bit for this. So we'll cover linked lists as much as we can. You will do sorted lists as well in the in the last lab, but we will see how far we can go. Is there any textbook or suggested reading? Yes, there is no required textbook, uh, but the su suggested books are already on the course outline on Avenue. Uh, my advice is follow the, the slides, the lectures, the labs, and then programming is something that really you can get as many questions as you wish for. So another thing I will do, I will post also exercise questions with solutions throughout the semester. So for example, when we finish a topic, I will put questions on Avenue without the answers, give you maybe a couple of weeks, try to answer them, and then I will post the solutions as well. And during the tutorials, in addition to covering the lab, uh, the TA will go through some of these questions with you. Yeah? 
I don't teach to SI, uh, Ahmed. Uh, we'll lab one start the week of Monday, 27. Yeah, so if I go back to the, the lab deadlines, lab zero deadline is, is uh, September 17th, that's Friday. The Monday after, this is the beginning of the two weeks of lab one, right? You should start working really, the, and I will release the lab on the same deadline as the previous lab. So in Friday, September 17th, you will be submitting lab zero, and I will post lab one on Avenue as well, such that if you want to start as early as you can, you will have, well, the lab doc, right? If you are asking about lab sessions, yes, lab sessions, as I said, is like the next week of these two weeks, right? Um, their exact schedule is in, I guess, in, in based on which section you registered for, it's in, in Mosaic as well as in your calendar right now. Yeah, I guess this is what I was also saying. Like make sure you attend lectures or watch them, attend the labs and make use of, of the office hours we are we are offering you. Um, well, something I used to mention in past year is uh, well, we have a software tool. Uh, it's unfortunate to say this, but just to let you know, we have a software tool that does like a, a cross code checking, just to make sure uh, uh, to detect any cheating happening. Uh, but even aside from this tool, uh, as I was saying, if you don't do good in, in the labs, you will have big problems with the midterm and the final, because I would assume in the exams, you already know your material, right? So again, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. Like try to do the labs your own and seek the help if you need, right? That's really the single advice that you should be able to succeed in this course. Yeah, well, the last last poly point is well, it's 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 every engineer's personal <laughs> perspective. But the problem with this course is again, we have so many students who try to offer the support as much as we can, but trying to scramble everything towards the end, you might not have the help you would need. For example, I used to receive emails from students in past year, well, maybe Friday 11 p.m. saying, well, I have this problem with my code and I cannot push to GitHub. Well, there is nothing I can do because I'm not available right now, right? So it's it's like you should you should use the the office hour help that was offered to you throughout these two weeks to make sure you don't face these problems, right? Is there any question? I guess I'm done with all the technical content and non-technical, like logistical content. I know also that the lecture is, is, is time is done, but usually what I do is I stay a few minutes afterwards for questions. Uh, you are free to leave if uh, if, if you would like. Um, yeah, but I, I'm just staying for a for couple of minutes to take questions. Yes, RG, the, the, the labs are usually due at end of the day, 11.59 p.m., that's correct. Uh, do you think we can meet you on campus sometime? Yeah, this is what I hope for. Uh, let's wait and see after this first couple of weeks how things run. Uh, we are fortunate in 2SH is that the course is a programming course and not a hardware course. So I, I see it best fits in this virtual environment, but just to get to know you personally and meet you, I will make sure at least after the couple of weeks and see how things kind of develop in the on campus. Um, I can arrange a time to meet some of you if 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 you would like. Um, the course videos on YouTube are recorded to best. Yes, Ahmed, that, that's correct. So the the playlist I have put on Avenue is for uh, for the best offering 2020, both for lectures and tutorials. This year. Uh, once the lecture finishes while well, I'm recording it, and then I will post it on 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 uh, another playlist for 2021. Oh yeah, well, like the the way we do the lab uh, manual is we will make sure, especially lab zero, because this is a setup one. We have detailed instructions both for Windows and Mac users, right? And if someone would like to use Linux. Well, I, I also did the setup on this lab for Linux myself as well, so I can I can help with that. But there is no problem at all with using Mac for for this course. And in fact, you have detailed instructions for this. If you have downloaded the lab manual uh, uh, of Lab Zero, maybe not today, but yesterday or the day before, you should really re-download it because today morning I have updated the lab manual to include detailed instructions for Mac users. 
Well, let me term exam be procured. Yes, uh, Munib. Uh, I will give some details about the how the how we run the midterm and and the final exam uh, later on. But usually we also do run it through GitHub. And uh, yes, it's procured. It's during a specific time. Uh, so I, I will give you the details uh, hopefully uh, later on. Good. Is there any other question? Uh, I have one that's like kind of unrelated to content. Um, sure. Are you uh, brought like are you at your office at McMaster? Or are you like operating from home as well? Yeah, well, I, I well, if you are asking right now. Right mm. now, I'm not at the office. I'm 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 operating from my home office, uh, but I I do go to campus, uh, like starting going in in fact maybe a month ago to 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 conduct some meetings and meet my students and so I will I will drop in. If you are asking about this course, right now there is no obligation at all for any student to really come to campus. Uh, mm. All of the office hours are scheduled virtually. But I what I what I was saying is that. Later on, once I see how things, because things have been changing very rapidly recently on campus, uh, well, for some political reasons, uh, but but at the end, once things settle down a little bit on campus, I will also post on Avenue or tell you in lectures that I'm dropping on this day for a couple of hours if anyone wants to come and meet, well, given that he follows the rules that he's vaccinated and does the proof, all the things that have been, I guess you guys are already aware of. Uh, but if you're asking like generally, uh, well, uh, I I go to to campus on certain times, right? Uh, I don't fully operate from campus right now. Yeah. Thanks, Smith. I hope this answers your question. Yeah. Yeah, I was just curious. If I use a MacBook to do the lab, I should download Xcode. Yes, Zeming, and you find this in Lab Zero, Lab Zero detail. It shows you exactly what software you need to download. Yes, not Ming, uh, Ming GW, but it's Xcode, and, and and this is already explained on, on Lab Zero. Is any recourse for learning syntax of C and C++? Uh, well, we'll go through the syntax ourselves, like in, in the first couple of lectures, so I wouldn't worry too much. But again, like there are so many resources online for C and C++. Tutorials point can be a, a very good starting point. Can we use VS Code for the labs? Arjun, so well, I would say, the general rule I, I said in the past is you are free to do the lab the way you would like to do it, but if you don't follow the uh, the environment, the IDE, we are uh, kind of asking you to follow in the lab, you won't, we will not be able to help you if you face a problem. So my advice, my recommendation is make sure you follow the same IDE. Don't use a different IDE. Don't use Visual Studio Code or anything else. Uh, uh, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to help you. I provide no guarantees that he has provided no guarantees that the setup we have will work smoothly on Visual Studio Code, right? So to be able to organize things, follow the same IDE that we, we are recommending. Uh, well, there is no attendance required for, for this course. Any component of the course, you don't have to. There is no attendance required at all, like whether it's lab, tutorial, lectures, uh, all tutorials would be recorded. Lectures would be recorded as well. Um, good. Hi, Professor. Yep. Um, I have a question about the lab there. So I was going through the lab menu yesterday and I finished my environment setup. Um, I just have a question about the lab questions. So it requires us to like operate the Eclipse, but I don't really know how to use it. Is there like, are we going to be taught how to use it or we're just going to learn how to use it on our own time? You mean use Eclipse, how to yes. use Eclipse? But it yes. tells you exactly in detailed steps. So it just doesn't tell you just use Eclipse. It tells you go to file, new new project. Like if you follow the steps, that's really what you, what you are going to do in every other lab. So that's really what you need. So it doesn't really ask you to do something that you are not provided an instruction with, right? So I'm not sure if I get your question. Like. The Lab Zero document walks you through exactly through all the detailed steps within Eclipse that you need to follow, right? Uh, nothing else. Like if it tells you like open a terminal, it shows you. You go to Window, View, Open Terminal. Like it tells you exactly what steps you need to follow. That's really what you need to do. Nothing else. Oh, right? okay. I thought we need to do some programming on there. Okay. 
Yeah, we will do the programming on Eclipse, but it's simply like, well, once you open the project and you open the file, well, you just double click it, it shows up in your workspace and then you write the code, right? And then it also tells you how to compile the code, how to run it, right? Okay. That's, uh, yeah, I guess I guess those kind of questions might be resolved once you attend the tutorial, right? Okay. Um, yeah, I advise you also to watch tutorial one on YouTube from Best Offering because it goes through some of the details of, well, unit testing, GitHub in detail, how it works. So it gives you the spirit behind the way we run the labs, right? Yeah. Uh, it's very necessary to know this background. Uh, well, Aladdin will go through it as well on, on Friday, but maybe to prepare yourself. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you, Professor. Thanks. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Is there any other question? Okay. Thanks, everyone. And I will, uh, well, I will see you tomorrow then. Thank you. Bye bye.